The Anatomy of a Murder. I struck the first blow in the back of her head because that was what was available. Coldly chronicled in gruesome clinical detail by the mad doctor who beat Aspen socialite Nancy Fister to death with a hammer. It wasn't bang, 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 bang. It was bang. Oh, and what do we do now? His dying confession captured in a chilling eight hour interview just months before he would hang himself in his jail cell. Then my training was kicking in, and it was like, OK, let's make sure that she doesn't awaken in the moments that remain to her. The confession uncovered exclusively by a Crime Watch Daily investigation that may finally lay to rest a sensational murder mystery that has simply refused to die. Dr. Trey Styler had previously confessed to police that he murdered Nancy Fister, but only in an affidavit that many doubted was true, suspecting he was taking the rap to free his wife, Nancy, who had been jailed along with him on first-degree murder charges. And if he continued to try to deny that he did it, he knew he wasn't going to help Nancy. But Dr. Styler agreed to do this second video confession with Daleen Berry, author of a book about the case titled Guilt by Matrimony, in the hope that it would end persistent suspicions that Nancy had something to do with the crime. He said, I need to tell the truth for Nancy. I need to do that because she deserves for me to do that. And so the least I can do is come clean on this. And Nancy Styler would sit at my side to watch her late husband's final testament. So Nancy, what I'm about to show you, this is going to be the first time that you've seen this video. So this is going to be a difficult thing for you to watch. Uh, it's going to be very emotional material. And I want you to know that if it becomes overwhelming at any point, we can pause. OK, we're going to watch it now. God, I wish it never happened. It did. Nancy is immediately taken aback by how Trey's physical appearance has deteriorated since she last saw him. I mean, he doesn't look like himself. He's got the long beard, the hair is long. Looks totally different, sounds totally different. Trey remembers leaving his wife asleep in their motel room while he goes to confront Nancy Fister over their eviction from her house, her demands for $14,000 in utility costs and property damage and her refusal to let them retrieve beauty spa equipment they'd left in her basement. I remember going there with the intention of talking to her. I was angry with her and intended to challenge her and to demand that she retract her demands for more money. I intended to confront her and to demand that she back down. When he arrives at the Fister home, Trey knocks on the door, gets no response, and notices the door is unlocked. I remember calling her name, coming in and finding her blissfully asleep. Trey begins to talk to Fister, but can't wake her up. I think there was part of me that was thinking that she was playing asleep, that she was just not responding. I've been told since that time that she had earplugs in. That's why she didn't hear me. I didn't know that at the time. And Nancy Fister's silence sends him into a blind rage. She was sleeping peacefully while my life was going down the tubes. The next thing I knew, it had been done. He'd hit Nancy Fister in the head with a hammer he found in her house. I struck the first blow in the back of her head because that was what was available. Since she did not react to that, took her from sleep straight to unconsciousness. Dr. Styler takes Fister's pulse and realizes she's not dead. It wasn't bang, 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 bang. It was bang. Oh, and what do I do now? And then it probably took a couple of minutes before I thought, let's just make sure I hit her in 
with two frontal lobes, kind of more on top. Okay. Um, because I knew that that would preclude any consciousness. Can I just stop it? Stop it there, Nancy. We initially wanted to explain this as a way as this, you know, this was a man who snapped. Mm -hmm. But I mean, now we're talking about medical training, the, the location of the blows, a man who took her pulse after the first blow. The doctor in him is coming out and being analytical after he's just lost his mind. Trey grabs an extension cord as he plans what to do with Nancy Fister's body. I wanted to contain her and the blood so that she didn't bleed on the things and I grabbed some big trash bags, pulled one over her head, I was gonna put the other one over her feet. I used that extension cord to kind of hold her up like this. I rolled the body onto a sheet, pulled her off of the bed under the floor, and then dragged the sheet, basically. The sheet there, okay. she's there. Grabbed the foot of the sheet, so to speak, back up, pulled it to me. Well, it took about, I mean, it's only about 10 feet. Can I just pause it there as well? I mean, that, that's, it's so difficult to watch. It's so hard to look at. And, and I guess this goes to the heart of your implication in all of this, right? This rumor and this innuendo and supposition. I mean, we're looking at him now. This is a guy in a wheelchair. He certainly doesn't look in top physical condition. You knew him better than anyone. He, he was able to do it on his own. Well, he did, yeah. And you look at the laws of physics, you can drag a bunch of weight rather than lift it. And it surprises me that law enforcement didn't look at it that way. I mean, it's, it's pretty chilling, isn't it, to see him? Oh my God, it's horrible. Then he stuffs the wrapped body of Nancy Fister in her bedroom closet. I mean, there's part of me that can't believe I did do it. And he insists his wife had nothing to do with the murder. One thing I know beyond doubt is that Nancy not only had no involvement in it, she had no knowledge of it. But many still have their doubts about that, suspecting Trey was covering for the woman he loved so much that here he breaks down recalling their early courtship. When I returned home that night, my mother was... <laughs> I told her I'd met the woman I didn't marry. Could just pause it there. I mean, you can tell you were everything to him. Hmm. Not enough. Not enough. What do you mean by not enough? Not enough to keep him alive. Not enough to make him want to live. But enough for him to make a false confession just to get her off the hook? What do you say to the people of Aspen who continue to cast doubts? I'm seeing progress, I'm seeing people who didn't even want to look at me, who were afraid to have their children next to me, are now saying, how could we believe that of you? And there's going to be some people who don't believe me ever. And what can I say to them? Next, I take Nancy Styler back to the scene of the crime and confront her with the very tough questions a lot of people in Aspen are still asking. Did you kill Nancy Fister?